Carolina out in Los Angeles. That's a 940 tip tonight. Listen on Buzz Sports Radio, 620 AM, 99.9 FM, HD2. If you are in Chapel Hill or in the Durham area, you can also pick it up, 104.5 FM there. And we also stream on your smart speaker. Just say, please play Buzz Sports Radio. Carolina Panthers made a couple of moves yesterday. One of them made a ticker. The other one did not. The one that did not was Sam Franklin Jr.'s agreement to terms, the uh, team leader in special teams tackles. The other one, which did make the sports tickers, which was the agreement to a two-year deal with Jadavion Clowney. Coming in to talk about it here on Next Up, Chop It Up, is the host of The Drive every afternoon, 3 to 6. Tim Donnelly, who has been following Plenty of Panthers action here in the offseason. And, Tim, the first question is, and it's not about impact. We'll talk about that in a hot second. But my thought to you is Dave Canales and Dan Morgan's pitch must have been rehearsed over and over and over again to get Clowney to sign in Carolina, especially with whatever the New York Jets tried to push out there. What is the pitch that they gave to Clowney to say, guess what? Yeah, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to sign with Carolina. Uh, the, the, to be honest with you, I think it had a lot to do with um, let's get our let's get our phones out, let's go to the map, let's go to the GPS app, and uh, let's plug in your house, let's plug in your home, let's plug in your high school, let's plug in your best friend, your family, uh, because he's from Rock Hill, South Carolina, and and obviously that this allows him to uh, be closer. He does a lot of uh, philanthropic stuff in the area um, because you know for a player in his thirties who's probably you know wants to to build up some legacies and get some wins and get some hardware uh carolina had to, to probably stretch the truth a bit to get him to come to to uh to charlotte but you know you, you can't fight home and and it, it sounds like that uh that meant something to him and then secondarily i don't know how many teams were willing to go with the uh, the two-year contract so maybe the jets were drawing a hard line with a one year and carolina said we'll we'll give you the extra year to uh to make this happen and they did but to refine that pitch, and I led into this segment by talking about providing hope mm-hmm. to the fan base, which last year, again, lots of hope, right? Mm-hmm. We trade up, make the big move for Bryce Young. We bring in a guy like Adam Thielen. Brian Burns is still sticking around. We're a pretty healthy team. House of Cards collapses. There is a sense <laughs> of hope again this year, and you see it online. You see it within posts on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. You see it in the bloggers and whatnot going, wow. They made some signings. They made a few things. So what's so different about this year's pitch to these free agents that are coming in that provides that hope again in thinking that House of Cards does not collapse week one? Well, actually, I think that the clowny one is a little different than than some of the others, right? You look at particularly the big money deals, right? Uh, the two offensive guards for $153 million in total contract value. Um, even somebody like Deontay Johnson who was brought in on it, like they didn't have to rework the deal. All of those deals could be seen as we're building long term. We, you know, we're trying to be good in 2027. Clowney does feel like, like you know, he's been a mercenary, right? He's been on a bunch of different teams in the last four or five years, and and that's because he's kind of seen as a guy that can come in. He might not be the best edge rusher in the world, but if you're a contender and you need an edge rusher, he can fill that role. So, you know, I talked about this yesterday with, with Dennis on on the drive in the afternoons. It, it does feel like. Cock, uh, Canales and and Morgan probably had maybe that 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 moment where they looked around and went, you know, we might be closer than than we think we are. I like that signing. You know, I wasn't expecting to get this guy, but we did. You know, we we might be ready to win, and and we don't want to, you know, have an offense that works or have have you know some young guys that are really good and not have the veterans to support them if we can make a run at the NFC South. I don't know if I agree with them, but it does feel like the internal kind of discussion has changed with this clowny, clowny signing. Tim Donnelly here with The Drive here every afternoon, 3 to 6 on 99.9 The Fan. Next up, Paul Ihander, Instagram Hill with you this morning. Uh, talking about Carolina Panthers moves, as they push forward, there has been this kind of back-ended support, so to speak, for free agency for this team, uh, getting a lot of good looks. As you just mentioned, things that may have fallen into their lap. There is kind of this alumni push, at least I've seen a few tweets, uh, Jonathan Stewart being one of them, suggesting that Stephon Gilmore should come back. Cowboys haven't quite closed the Dallas Cowboys, haven't quite closed the door on him. But if you had to flip the coin, 50-50, heads or tails, call it the shot of Gilmore coming back to Carolina and mending that fence. 
you know, it's it's ironic because the, the, I'm going to answer the question the exact same way that I, that I answered the first clowny question. Uh, hey, let's let's plug in your high school, which is the same high school as Jadavion Clowney. They were high school teammates. Uh, let's plug in your high school to the GPS. Let's see what's closer, Dallas or or, or Charlotte. And again, he's he's been here before, uh, so I, I think it's it's leaning the Panthers' way with with you know I'm I'm going to cover my tracks here. Uh, you have to make sure he's healthy. Um, he's a, a mid thirties corner and, and the Panthers just moved on from, from Dante Jackson, who actually stayed healthy, even though he, uh, you know, had some injury stuff in his past. JC Horn has some injury stuff. You, you can't as a, as a defense, you can't have your top two corners in the, in the cold tub and not on the field every Sunday. So, you know, you got to do the, the due diligence on his health, but if it's there, I think he makes sense. I think he's a good mentor for JC Horn. They shared the field. Uh, Horn's freshman or rookie year, not freshman year, too much college basketball in the brain. Uh, but his rookie year, they were they were on the uh, the, the same defense. So I, I think it's a good signing, and I think Carolina is interested in it. And as you mentioned, you want to get some some favor with the alum. You want Jonathan Stewart and Cam Newton to talk positively on podcasts. Stephon Gilmore can help that out. All right, pick thirty three, pick thirty nine. <laughs> in the last moments we have left, Carolina Panthers have Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, and Jonathan Mingo. Right? Mm-hmm. They've got a couple of slot guys who love to lo- run the jet sweeps, as you know. I love to run the jet sweeps. <laughs> so, is thirty three an actual young receiver? You have Mingo. You you spent your pick. What needs to be addressed? Do I really need a fourth young receiver? I still have Thielen under contract for two more years, and he was a Pro Bowler. I will I will fight back a little bit when when you we'll say push. when you say you just picked Jonathan Mingo. You're talking to the guys that just lost their job. Uh, they didn't draft Jonathan Mingo. I think 33 will be a wide receiver unless, and it is a deep wide receiver class. Some people have tier breaks at like you know top 10 wide receivers, top 20, 12 wide receivers. I think 33 will be a wide receiver unless there's you know five guys that they really like, and then they just go, all right, we'll wait for 39 because uh, you have both of those picks. Um, but I think they want guys that fit their offense that they've chosen. They've actually been been pretty ruthless with. Like, hey, we don't care, Hayden Hurst, if it saves us absolutely no salary cap, uh, you know, savings. We're cutting you because you don't fit what we do and you're not our guy. Jonathan Mingo being a second-round pick by the previous regime, I don't think that gets him any kind of favor with this new staff. He's going to have to earn it. So if a Xavier Leggett, a Keon Coleman, a Troy Franklin, who are kind of some some names being mentioned with with Carolina, if, if they're there at 33 and, and that's what they love, I I do not think they will hesitate. I mean, they'll wait to hear calls on, on the trade market, but they'd be more than comfortable taking those guys. Tim Donnelly, our guy, in afternoons with the drive 3-6 to six every day here on 99.9 The Fan. Appreciate it, Tim. Thank you very much, Paul. All right, hey, folks, don't worry uh, if you uh, need any more Panthers content. Again, 99.9 The Fan on YouTube, and Tim's back at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. North Carolina men's basketball team aims to return to the Elite Eight for the fourth time since 2016, a matchup with Alabama tonight at 9.39 in the NCAA Tournament's West Region. Top seeded UNC is set to face the number four seed Crimson Tide in the Sweet 16 at Crypto.com Arena during its quest to get back to the Final Four. It's hockey night in Carolina as the Hurricanes face the Detroit Red Wings at PNC Arena for a special start time of 7.30. That means our network coverage begins at 7 p.m. with Stormwatch hosted by Adam Gold. As you're leaving the arena tonight, listen in to the Aftermath, the official post-game show of your Carolina Hurricanes. And when you get home, check out the Canes Corner podcast hosted by Adam Gold live on 999 The Fans YouTube channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Find these stories and more on WREL Sports Fan. Dot com. Paul Ihander with you here. Graham Hill is here. Carolina basketball tonight, 940. Again, listen, Buzz Sports Radio, 99.9 FM HD2. For those of you who have HD radios, 620 AM. For those of you with AM radios, if you're in Chapel Hill, or in Durham, you can listen 104.5 FM or just stream it. Just tell your smart speaker, play Buzz Sports Radio. You'll have that, plus you'll have the Clemson tip as well. That's at 7 o'clock. Clemson taking on Arizona, which we just lightly dusted on just a little teeny bit. Arizona is favored in that one by 7.5. 
Clemson saying they didn't like the travel to get out there. So woe is us, ACC still again. Baseball is back. Bessemero, just uh, dig up uh, Enrico Palazzo from the Naked Gun. Have Leslie Nielsen singing the national anthem. Cue up Major League and anything quotable from Nuke Lelouch or Crash Davis. And baseball is back. So the big drum roll, please. The team that we have selected for... Oh, wow. Uh, Graham, that's heavy timpani there. That's a timpani drum, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Uh, for Graham to choose and follow here. Uh, to the fact that the last time Graham tried to go to a baseball game, it got rained out, a professional baseball game, means I'm not picking a team with an open-air stadium. So, I okay. Sure that, I want to make sure that you actually get to go see a game. And it feels like low-hanging fruit, but it's not because I have many reasons behind it. They were a playoff team last year. Uh, they are not... Uh, they are they are much younger than they are this year. No, I'm saying they're much younger this year, but should be a playoff team. I think I know where. But they gutted their pitching staff, the Tampa Rays. Let's go, Durham Bulls affiliate. You are going to be a fan of the Tampa Rays this year. Tropicana! You'll be able to go see a game indoors. They have Brandon Lowe and Josh Lowe, Lowe who got hurt in spring training. Yandy Diaz at first, who hits pretty much everything put in front of him. The bat flipping Randy Arozarena, and yes, this is a team that I think you can get behind. Graham, a lot of guys have ACC roots, which will help a bit. Uh, there are a number of uh, guys who grew up in the Virginias and the Carolinas who play for this team, and obviously the pipeline is just twenty miles north of the studios here, so it allow you to keep up just a little bit easier because this is a much younger team. I believe half the roster already turned over from last year. It's like tons of guys who are either in AAA or signed from other teams who will be making the opening day roster. So, Paul, thank you for that. Rays okay. fans, let's go. Okay, um, very excited. As part of my contract for this for this deal, I will be going to a game at some point this season. There you go. Maybe be doing the show live from there. Um, and I think it's only right that I go ahead and place a future bet for the Tampa Bay Rays to win the division. Okay, so just to let you know, I, I did you a little bit of disservice because I did pick an American League team with no real natural rivals on the West Coast. Like, you've got to go to, like, the Yankees. Yep. I mean, really, for, like, close AL teams, the Yankees, Cleveland, uh, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, you're There's a little bit of no man's land, but I wanted to make sure you could at least go to a game that would never get rained out. Fair enough. And Tropicana Field, for as kind of everyone's like, oh, it's just kind of a pit or whatnot, it's actually kind of fun for baseball. It's indoors. You can have entire sections to yourself some some games. <laughs> just, I don't know what that says about Tampa, but they are building a new stadium there. So, And the pipeline is here. You have a clear pipeline here uh, in Durham being the AAA affiliate. So baseball is back. Let's go Dodgers. They play later today. Hey, I'm leaning into it, folks. If you're going to be, a, if you're going to have a team – Root for the team. Root for the team. Don't care if it's the Braves. Don't care if it's the Phillies, if it's the Yankees. we got a couple Mets fans here in this building, which I find odd. But, hey, you are who you are. I mean, at least Pete Alonzo wins the home run derby every year. So you got that. Sure. <laughs> You've got that. Uh, last night, high point lost in the CBI championship. You've heard me talk about uh, some sports betting. I, I took high point on the money line. They were down... 20 in that game they came all the way back and then they decided to start shooting threes in the last couple minutes but good run for the Panthers as they lost to Seattle and uh in the CBI the Caps and Wizards are not moving to Virginia sorry Virginia fans uh Ted Leonisis did a deal with Washington DC proper after the funding and kind of any support that he may have had to move the Caps and the Wizards into it was going to be Northern Virginia. Let's be honest, this wasn't going to be something, you know, south of Richmond or or Newport or whatever. This was going to be in Northern Virginia, but it was going to be Virginia. They were going to build a brand new arena. They were going to build a media center. They were going to build a training center. They were going to build an entertainment district. Allegedly, they ended up doing a deal in D.C., which will get pushed through renovations to Capital One Arena. They're going to expand the entertainment district into the Chinatown area which is just north of D.C. if you're familiar with it. They're going to do a little bit more in the footprint, kind of make it a little bit more of an immersive 21st century experience. So the Caps and the Wizards not moving to Virginia, certainly not moving to Maryland. All right, final note for you here, something that I found incredibly interesting. After all these news and notes that came out about the NFL in the past few days, 
especially with uh, the National Football League deciding that they were going to play a Christmas double header, which Christmas this year, because of the leap year, last year was on the Monday, right? In 23, it was on the Monday. Seems so long ago. It was just three months ago. Uh, the Christmas doubleheader on Wednesday. They're going to do Christmas doubleheader on Wednesday. There is a stretch of dates between December 20th and January 1st where there's pretty much football or dissection of football going on every night. And for us here in the triangle, thinking about now, include a bunch of hockey into this as well. So when you think about it, how it lines up, you have a college football playoff game December 20th. You have three of those games and NFL games on the 21st. That's the Saturday. Sunday, NFL Day, December 22nd. Monday night football, the 23rd. And then the Christmas doubleheader. Followed by Thursday night football. You get a Friday night off, which will be bowl games, you know. NFL games, the following three nights. New Year's Eve, a CFP game, and then three CFP games on January 1st. You are going to be swimming knee deep, like waist deep in the pigskin 